This is Travel Vacations Workbook, video number three. We'll be on the cities worksheet on this um, video, and we'll be doing steps 17 to 24. Step 17. On the cities worksheet, click cell F4 and enter a formula that will subtract the departure date B1 from the return date B2, and then multiply the result by the rental car per day value F3. So I'll go ahead and click here, and I want to remind you about the order of operations. So we want to subtract before we multiply. So we'll need to go ahead and apply parentheses so the system will subtract before we multiply. I'll do an equal sign here. We want to subtract. Um, we want to take B2 and subtract B1. We'll put a parentheses around this um, part of the formula. That equals five, right? 23 minus 18 is five. And then we'll multiply those five days by the rental car per day, which is in cell F3 at $50 per day. We should get the answer of, I'm sorry, $30 per day. We should get the answer of $150. Step number 18. On the city's worksheet, click cell E13. Depending on the city, you'll either take a shuttle to or from the airport or rent a car. We'll insert an if function that compares to see if yes or no is located in the rental car, column four city. If the city contains no, display the value in cell F2. If the city contains yes, display the value um, in cell F4. Copy the function from cell E13 and use the paste formulas option to copy the function to the range E14 to E18 without remo removing the border from cell E18. So essentially, we want to put an if function here that says if they're getting a rental car, we need to have the rental car total of 150. If they're not getting a rental car, which means they're taking a shuttle, we need this number to show up into the cell. And that 50 or 150 is dependent on whether this says yes or no. So we're going to do a logical test of if cell C13 or whatever's in column C is equal to a yes or a no. Your choice to do choose to do it with a yes or a no, I'm going to choose to do it with a, yes, with a no. I'm going to go ahead and click on the formulas, click on the logical tab, click on the if function. Under the logical test, we're going to go ahead and click on the cell C13, is this equal to, and you'll have to, you can write the word no, and you'll have to write it exactly as it's written into the system here with the lowercase o. I want you to see what happens if I just go into the value of true. It's going to tell me that this doesn't make sense. So I need to indicate that what I'm looking for exactly. When you're uh, inserting words, you'll need to put quotes around them. So I need to put quote here, and I'll need to put a quote here. Once I do that, it tells me whether that's true or false. Now I can choose to put a yes here as well if I would like to, but I'm choosing to do it by no. Whichever way you choose it, make sure you put the correct true or false value, whether it's F2 or F4, in the right place so you get the right answer. So I'm going to do a no. If they are not taking a rental car, we, were, we are going to have... So if they're not going to take a rental car, we're going to have cell F4 show in there, right? I'm sorry, F2. They're, take, they're taking a shuttle. If they are taking a rental car, they're going to have what's an F4 show up. So I want you to see that as a no. If I was to do it as a yes, these would be flipped. This would be F4. This would be F2. So I'm going to do a yes here. And here I would come over here and change this to four, and I would change this to two. Now, either one is correct. It doesn't matter if you want to do a yes or a no. But I'm actually more comfortable with the no, because I just feel like it's easier for me to mentally process. If it's a no, then they're taking a shuttle. If it's a yes, they're getting a rental car. And I'll go ahead and click OK. And you'll see that pops into this um, formula here. Now I want you to also make sure that you have absolute reference these because these are going to 
be automatically um, copy the formula. So the next part says to make sure that we display this formula in cells E14 to E18 without um, losing the format of the border here. So if I was to just do an automatic fill, you'll see that this border gets deleted. So I actually want to select this. Um, I want to copy this information. I want to copy the cell. Then I want to go ahead and select all of these cells here. And I'm going to do something called a paste special. So there are two ways you could do this. You can right click here and go up to your paste special options and choose the correct one here, which is the formulas. Um, and you could go all the way down and see all the other options there are here. You could also go up to the home tab and go to the paste option. And you can choose to look at the paste specials. Now what I want to do is I want to paste not only the formula, but I also want to paste the formatting. So if there is a way to paste formulas and formatting. It's this one that looks like a um, percentage and it has an FF, FX. Um, if I was to just paste the formulas, you'll see that the last one, E18, doesn't necessarily show me the um, formatting of accounting. So I'd have to go back and fix that, which isn't a problem. If you want to, you can. But if I choose this one, formulas and formatting, it'll paste not only the formula to give me the correct answer for that row, but it'll also give me the format, which is the color, the accounting format, and all of that. And I still won't lose the border of the spreadsheet. So let's move to step 19. On the city's worksheet, click cell F13. The lodging is based on a multiplier by city type. Some cities are more expensive than others. We're going to insert a VLOOKUP function that looks up the city type B13, compares it to the city, the COL range of EA7 to B10, and returns the COL percentage. Then multiply the result of the lookup function by the total base lodging B5 to get the estimated lodging for the first city. Copy the function from F13 and use the paste formulas option to copy the function to range F14 to F18 without removing the border in cell F18. Now that's a mouthful of directions. We're going to have to break it down step by step so it makes sense. Okay, so let's go ahead and insert this if function. We'll click on the formulas tab, go to the lookup reference book and choose VLOOKUP. We want to look up the city type. We would like to make sure in the table array that we're looking at city and cost of living. And in the column index, we were asked to return what's in column two here. I want you to make sure that um, before we click OK, you could click OK now or after that you have um, absolute reference A6 through B10 and click OK. Now we've returned the 1.25, which is in a decimal format, but we want to multiply that by the base of lodging. So I'm going to go ahead and do a multiplication of B5, and we'll want to make sure that we absolute reference that as well, because we're going to go ahead and automatically fill this formula. Now we'll want to do the same thing we did in column E, where we copy this formula. Go ahead and select the information, the cells where you'd like the information to be pasted, not only the formula, but the format, which is the accounting format. I'll go to the home tab, we'll click on paste, and I can click formulas and formatting. Now, if you didn't absolute reference the table and you didn't absolute reference the multiplication of the lodging, you will get some errors. So make sure you've done that. And that is step 19. So let's go to step 20. On the city's worksheet, click cell H13 and enter the function that calculates the total cost for the first city. Copy the function in H13 and use the paste formulas option to copy the function to the range H14 to H18 without removing the borders again. So let's go ahead and click on the total cost. and we're going to have to calculate the total cost for the first city. So what is the total cost? The total cost is equal to the sum of the person's airfare, their shuttle or rental, their lodging, and their meals. This is a simple sum function. 
I want to go ahead and make sure that I've inserted it correctly, which we did. We'll go ahead and copy that and we'll go ahead and select the place where we want all of that formula to follow. And again, we'll choose formulas and formatting. Step number 21. On the city's worksheet, select the range E14 to H18. Apply a comma style with zero decimal places. Select E13 to H13 and apply the counting format with a zero decimal place. So we'll select E14 through H18. Apply a comma style with zero decimal places. Now that would be located here in the styles group, a comma style with zero decimal places. And then select range E13 to H13. You know, I made a mistake. I should have just selected 14, but that's okay. You'll see that mistakes happen and then you can fix them. Go ahead and click on the home tab. Go back to the comma styles group or the styles group. And here we're going to go ahead and apply an accounting format with zero decimal places. Now you can choose the currency option here. Um, which is zero decimal places, or you can also go up here and choose the accounting format, which is right here, and decrease it to zero decimal places. Okay, step 22. On the city's worksheet in cell I2, enter a function that will calculate the average total cost per city. So we're going to do an average, a maximum, and a min in cell in column I here. In cell I3, enter a function that will identify the lowest total cost. In cell I4, enter a function that will return the highest total cost. So we're going to be looking at these cells, this range of information, which is cell H13 to H18. And we're going to do an average, a max, and a min. So I'm going to do average. And you can type it and just double click it. I'll select this group of data, this range H13 to H18. Then we'll do a max, I'm sorry, a min. And then we'll do a max. Now this is what you might do in any organization. So you have sort of some variables set to see what is max, what's a min, which are the most expensive cities? How can we cut back on travel? How can we cut back um, and save some money? All right, and step 22, 23, step 23. On the city's worksheet, select landscaped orientation, set a one inch top margin, and center the worksheet data horizontally on the page. So if I was to do a home, or I'm sorry, a file and go to print, this is what my worksheet would look like if I was to print it. Now we are asked to move this from portrait mode to landscape mode. So one of the ways you can do it is in this area. When you go to the file, you can go to portrait here and choose landscape orientation. Now you'll see that everything is sitting on one page. We can also set um, our margins and center the worksheet data horizontally on the page. So all of that information can be located here in this page setup dialog box. Now I want you to pay attention to this dialog box. I'm going to cancel and go back out to the ribbon and show you where everything that we're doing can also be found there. So um, the margins, we can center it horizontally, vertically. We can also set our um, our margins at the half, at the one inch top margin. So you can do that here. You can also do that over here on your page layout tab. You can set your orientation to landscape. We can open up our page, um, our page setup dialog box here and work out from here. Click on margins centering horizontally and vertically. When you center the information horizontally, it'll move the data to the middle. If you center it vertically, it'll move it all the way to the center vertically. We have been asked to only center the data horizontally. We've also been asked to set a top one inch top margin. So I'll click this and change that to one inch and then click, I could go and print, click print preview, we could click an okay but now it's set to the way we would like it to look when it prints out.
Step 24. Ensure that the worksheets are correctly named, placed in the following order with DC, places, and cities. Save the workbook, close it, and then go ahead and submit it. So once you are complete here, please go ahead and submit this into Canvas under the Travel Vacations Assignment.